Hi and welcome everyone uh, back to the Justice for Aaron Brady campaign. Um, at the moment uh, with the campaign we're scrutinising a podcast uh, created by um, investigative journalist Nicola Talent uh, and with her in the podcast she has Neil Donald, I believe another uh, investigative journalist uh, with the Sunday World. Now this podcast was created on the back of a newspaper article uh, printed uh, in the Sunday World and online Sunday World. It was predominantly pictures of uh, Aaron um, when he was out at a visit, a medical visit, in relation to a shoulder injury um, in the Matter Hospital. Um, we made a number of videos about the um, article and highlighted that Nicola Talent was incorrect and had given false and misleading information um, and the detail in our article um, we said was somewhat pathetic and uh, disrespectful to uh, Detective Gard Adrian Donoghue that when you are writing about the case the very least a professional journalist should do is have the facts right. So we created the video and then Miss Talent and Mr Donald decided to come back with uh, this podcast, 35 minute podcast which we are taking a look at. Now we've done one video already, went out on Monday evening and we're going to continue to scrutinise the podcast and just see what is right, what is wrong, but um, more worryingly the underlying um, theme of the podcast to try and cover the arses of Angarda Shia and the investigation itself. Now we did cover this very briefly in Monday evening's video, but I would like to just bring it um, to your attention again. We're just going to listen to Miss Talent uh, a very quick um, little bit from the podcast and then we'll uh, just uh, respond to it. And uh, the National Bureau of Criminal Investigation were involved from early on. And I think a member of that, the Bureau was put full time on it almost, kind yep. of like on a solo towards the end. Because what happened was... So a slight bit of waffling and not really sure, no detail as such, but... Um, Miss Talent is trying to tell us that a senior figure from the NCBI came from Dublin, was ensconced in Dundalk in Fort Apache, uh, Dundalk Yard Station, and at some point he was put solo in charge. I presume, and we presume, that Miss Talent is talking about uh, Detective Mark Phillips here. And um, if we look at the tone of uh, the beginning of this whole podcast, we've mentioned it in the previous video, that um, it was a slow burner and all this complete nonsense and it's an excuse. And as I say, it's covering the arses of Angarda Shiakona and the mess that was made of the initial stages of the investigation and how it all turned out to be a complete and utter disaster. And the Gardaí were forced into a position um, where they had no other option only get someone, anyone, for the mother of Detective Garda, Adrian Donahue. So we just want to highlight that there. We do believe uh, in some way, Miss Talent is talking about uh, uh, Detective Mark Phillips there, who was in the dog from an early stage and um, did uh, eventually end up as the senior investigating officer in the case. So we'll look now at the next clip. And again, it's a little bit more of creating uh, some sort of a, a narrative in respect of uh, the burglaries and the mentioned ram raids and all sorts of ATM machines here, uh, both journalists. So we'll just have a quick listen to that and then again we'll just uh, say a few words on it, okay? There had been a series of these creeper burglaries yeah. into homes. Cars had been stolen and they had then subsequently been used in ram raids both sides of the the border. Yeah. Not ram raids, armed robberies both sides of the border on... Um, but there was a series as well, Businesses. not necessarily these are the exact same people, but mm. there was a series of uh, ATM robberies as well were going mm. on. The creeper burglaries are where, um, you know, the, the rather than hot, hot wiring cars or whatever, which become very, very difficult to be modern cars, they, the, the, the raiders steal the keys from the home yeah. and literally... Now, I think it's quite clear what she is at uh, in this clip, trying to throw out uh, all about creeper burglaries, uh, ram raids, ATM machines and um, they do go in, start going into some detail obviously as you've seen 
about uh, creeper boulderies. Now, Aaron was never questioned about any of these things, and Nicola Talent actually mentions here that uh, there was a series of armed raids uh, both sides of the border. I'm not aware of any of that uh, as such, but I do know, I do know that there was another uh, raid at Dundalk Racecourse in 2011 or 2012, and it was stated very clearly, uh, although it was brought into the court uh, to create another narrative uh, during the course of Aaron's trial, it was stated very clearly by a number of senior investigating officers and detectives and indeed the prosecution, that had nothing to do whatsoever with Aaron Brady. And again, they're mentioning ATM machines here. Um, Neil Donald throws it out there. Um, and as far as I know, the, Aaron was in America when all the ATM machines were um, pulled out of the walls. Absolutely nothing got to do with Aaron. But, and he even says it there uh, quietly at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, I don't think it's anything to do with this gang, but just throwing stuff out there and as in respect to the boulderies uh, i was at the previous um, the most recent trial of uh, the two men that was in the special criminal court and there was a number a number of details in respect of creeper boulderies in different parts uh, mullingar on melon i think shercock uh, kingscourt and monaghan and some of the details from that and uh, descriptions for example, I think, um, I'm not sure whether it was Clonmelon or Mullingar, there was a jeep stolen. And uh, it was clearly seen by a number of people. The man who stole the jeep was 18 stone and had a bodybuilder's neck in him, a very large neck, which didn't match the description of Aaron or any of his friends. Uh, then there was another uh, creeper bouldery, and someone suspected in that was... Um, actually described as a skinnish uh, foreign looking lad like a polish chap and then we had another one where we had a very skinny irish redhead chap driving a car none of which uh, links anywhere to um, anyone that was in the ccj or definitely not aaron brady and um what we have to see here is exactly for what it is. Unfortunately, we didn't understand it uh, before Aaron's trial and during Aaron's trial that the mainstream media have been used to throw uh, this um, curated and narrated story out there uh, for public consumption. Now, the only difference is now we are critiquing it, we're asking questions, and everything we are saying is available on public record. And these people here, if they're professional journalists, should know that so we're not saying anything that's not known uh, by the courts the authorities and indeed obviously the mainstream media here in ireland so we're going to look i know at another little clip and indeed the reason uh, nicola uh, does ask the reason why why we are doing this campaign and one of the reasons is as we put more pressure on on gardashia corner and ask more questions Obviously, those in authority are saying, is this Brady campaign telling the truth? What's happening? More people have to be taken in to tell lies. And that was very, very evident during the course of the most recent trial um, when we found a BMW in Dramiskin on CCTV footage. We found the stolen Passat actually driving through Dunleo. Now, the reason why I say the stolen Passat, on Garda Shea Kona identified it as such. And then we had Garda James Carlin, who had... Um, seen James Flynn's BMW in the square of Cross Midland just after the modern robbery at Lordship Credit Union. And that was all hidden from Aaron's trial as such. It was buried in uh, thousands of hours of CCTV footage. But the likes of James Carlin and that had to come in and try and paddle his way through an explanation that the CCTV footage was poor when actually the guards had used the exact same CCTV footage from the same camera only at a different time to say that's James Flynn's car. Absolutely um, ludicrous but it's the reason why we keep um, asking questions and probing because they're making the circle of layers bigger and as everyone knows the bigger the circle the weaker it is and this has happened here with Nicola Talent in this little clip uh, I'm just about to play you. We'll play it and then we'll just run over it. Drive away in them. Yes. So at this point... Um, they take the cars, they would park them up somewhere 
hidden. Yeah. And then they would change the reg on them, use yeah. them as part of these robberies and probably burn them afterwards. Burn them afterwards. Um, and yeah, it's part of the process of the planning yeah. of, of a robbery. 100% correct, Nicola. Almost certainly. And I think we can take it as a certainty. Whoever uh, used that vehicle at the Modern Robbery at Lordship Credit Union was not driving the same uh, car with the original number plates on it. I think we can take that as fact. Uh, nobody is going to be driving around with balaclavas, gloves, a shotgun and a handgun, a hammer and walkie-talkies, allegedly, and be driving around in a stolen vehicle with the original number plates on it. Never going to happen. But that was the story created by, uh, on Garda Shia Kona and by, in particular, um, Lokenstein uh, Junior Counsel for the Prosecution and Garda Garrett Kenna. Uh, tried to get this notion across that the 08D Passat scene was the vehicle that was stolen in Claherhead. And uh, we'll, we'll get into this more later on in this uh, podcast from Crime World about circumstantial evidence. The only people who seen the vehicle at the credit union said it was dark silver. The vehicle, the 08D vehicle, uh, Volkswagen was at, stolen and tore her head and subsequently burnt out uh, down the far side of Cady, or the far side of Newtown Hamilton, apologies. Far side of Newtown Hamilton was an 08D blue Passat. So this nonsense that they were driving the, around with the stolen the original number plates in a stolen vehicle makes absolutely no sense and then we have to add to that the story they want us to believe then is that from lordship credit union these raiders drove 37 kilometers to a uh, uh, highly um, secure town of newtown hamilton it's the center the barracks the psni is the sort of the head barracks in south Armagh. And the road they allegedly travelled would be very heavily travelled. All the roads between um, Lordship, as you cross the border, down towards Newton Hamilton, would be very heavily patrolled by PSNI. And there is no way in the world, when we look at the human aspect, now we try to stick to facts, details, CCTV footage that's been manipulated, times that have been manipulated, um, people who've told lies, uh, uh, about times and about what they heard and how that was manipulated and how uh, what genuine people have said and how that has been hidden so uh, but this is the human aspect of it and Nicola picks it up perfectly here they change the registration in the car and then they get all excited when they talk about oh and then it's burned out because they know there was a vehicle burned out um, down in Newton 37 kilometers from the scene nobody would ever, after discharging a firearm, would nobody would ever uh, leave a scene of a robbery and drive 37 kilometers. I think if the, these journalists do have the time, the facilities, and the, uh, the wherewithal to get the details of generally how far away a vehicle is burned, burned from scene of the crime, and I think the, you would find the average is three to four kilometers. It's done quickly, vehicles burned, and the getaway is done. So this narrative created by the DPP, and as, as I said before, particularly Lokenstein, uh, Garrett, Garrett Kenner, and uh, Mark Phillips, is, uh, it really, really holds no water when we look at it uh, in a logical and everyday manner. So uh, there's just one more little clip here, and again, it goes into uh, Mr. Donald is making excuses for um, the people in Fort Apache, Dundalk, uh, the incident room. So we just have a quick listen to that last clip. Yeah, so I mean, these, these there was a kind of a new generation of, of criminal had sprung up around the border area. There was a series of these crimes and this probably was the beginning of the end, actually, for, for people who were moving between the borders. Um, mm. You know, obviously, if if there there is circumstances where Gardaí can go across the border or the PSNI, but as we heard with the Regency, it's a very very complicated procedure. These are totally different jurisdictions. So, as I said, there we have it again. We have Neil Donald making excuses about two totally different jurisdictions. We were told during the course of Aaron's trial 
that the PSNI were extremely cooperative. Uh, we know for a fact a number of PSNI officers came to the uh, uh, court and give details about uh, finding the burnt out vehicle um, searches. We had the PSNI here in our home uh, during the course of a, a search and uh, very nice uh, officers um, were here with the search warrant looking for different things, obviously maybe paraphernalia from the credit union, uh, they were looking for the car seat allegedly that was in the stolen car and uh, very importantly on it was pictures of a short, short, short hair, a blonde short hair woman uh, who we know was a woman driving the vehicle that never uh, uh, really surfaced during the course of Aaron's trial because there was nobody in no woman to link Aaron to. Although there were several attempts made by Grehan and Stain to just throw out names. Again, something similar to what's happening here. And we have Mr. Donald here mentioning the Regency and uh, the problems with cross-border. As far as we've seen and what we were told repeatedly, multiple times in court, uh, there was no issue whatsoever with the PSNI and the assistance given in respect of the um, investigation into the murder of Detective Gard Adrian Donahue. So that gives you an idea. Uh, we'll be going into more specifics, details of actual evidence that they're speaking about later on. Uh, just want to highlight very much so that uh, this attempt to cover someone's arse in the, either the DPP, the prosecution, or as mentioned earlier by um, Nicola Talent, Mark Phillips, and blame someone else and there's this issue we're, we're ten and a half years now after the more than robbery and still uh, the whole thing is a complete and utter mess so uh, we are obviously more aware of this attempt and we can spot spot this bullshit when we see it because it's absolutely uh, nonsense they're not talking about the crime they're not talking about any specifics or any details they're throwing out as I say, a curated and manufactured story uh, that sort of fits the narrative for these people. Thank you for watching. Please, please, please like, comment and share our videos. We are being seriously uh, attacked on our social media pages and on Aaron's website. So we do need your help to get those algorithms up. And if you do feel uh, inclined to do so, uh, uh, please subscribe. And thank you to those people who have subscribed recently. I uh, must have a look at our subscribers and we'll, um, well, I'll put it out there now. Please subscribe to Justice for Aaron Brady uh, YouTube channel. And thank you once again. And we'll see you in our next video when we have another look at Mr. Donald and Miss, 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 Miss uh, Talent. Okay, thank you. See you in the next video.